Hi, this is Noel Black, producer of The Big Something, and today I am going to take you on a strange tour of the inside of Cheyenne Mountain Air Force Station, which I learned is not NORAD. And NORAD uh, has never actually been inside. They have NORAD has people who work inside, but NORAD proper, it is actually stationed down at Peterson Air Force Base. I was invited to take a personal tour of uh, like a friends and family kind of a tour, which meant I couldn't take pictures um, and I couldn't record anything. And I really just went out of personal curiosity because I've lived in Colorado Springs my whole life. So at the very end of the tour, the very gracious PO offered to give me this whole folder of historic photos and said that I could do a slideshow with these images and talk about what I saw when I was inside. So that's what I'm going to do today. This first thing that we're looking at is the structure of the mountain in the corner here where it says the North Portal. That's where you go in. And the first thing I learned that was really interesting is this tunnel that goes all the way over to the left-hand side of the picture. Um, it's like a pressure valve to keep the force of a nuclear explosion from actually blowing the doors into the Air Force Station, which is this sort of grid structure on the right here. And that is where all of the various buildings are housed. And then these reservoirs over here on the left, that is where they keep a lot of the spring water that they use to cool the diesel fumes, uh, different things when they run the generators. They do keep some of it, I think, for drinking. This is the tunnel under construction, the north entrance tunnel. The tunnel is really interesting because the way that they engineered this, they were they were looking for the ideal place to build this gigantic military bomb shelter. And they chose Cheyenne Mountain because they were looking for solid granite that had no spring water and no fault lines running through it. But once they actually started excavating, they found out that there was actually both a spring and uh, two fault lines. Now what you're looking at here, this sort of porcupine thing, is actually the design for how they keep the tunnel from caving in on itself, which is that they put these big, long screws into the walls of the tunnel, and they fill them with this pneumatic fluid, and they keep them pressurized to uh, essentially you know, trick the structure of the cave into thinking that there is no tunnel there, that in fact that it's solid. And you see these little bolt plates all around the cave walls as you're walking around. Blueprints. And here are the little bolts that you see. Um, throughout the complex when you're not inside one of the buildings. Here's the entryway, and here's Joe Perry giving the thumbs up to the giant blast door. I am not sure exactly when he came to visit Rock and Roll. Most of the photos that follow are excavation photos, and I'm just going to talk some over these about what I saw in there. And I think the most surprising thing to me when I went in there is that I was expecting it to really just be this big giant bat cave to you know, walk in. And I've always heard that there are buildings on springs. I always sort of expected to walk in and see a little, you know, a tiny little city inside the mountain. And in a lot of ways there is, but the buildings that are inside there are tucked up inside these caves. So you don't really see, you don't really ever see the outside of the buildings. And that was surprising for some reason, maybe my delusions from seeing war games the other thing that was really surprising is that these buildings, it, everything feels, um, if you've ever taken a tour of like a retired submarine or a Navy ship, it really feels like more like you're on a military boat than inside quote unquote buildings. The walls are, are painted, you know, various shades of gray and beige. There's not much in the way of decor. It's all very uh, utilitarian. There is a gym inside there. There are various amenities. They have a strange little concession stand that's sort of like going to a, a weird sort of understocked Conoco. They have a little snack station place. I think you can get pizza. Um, so there are all these little things, but they're tucked in these kind of tiny drab uh, corridors. And it's really confusing once you get inside there to know where you are unless you've been there for a long time or you have a map or a guide. 
uh, because it is this very labyrinthine place. And the other thing that's interesting as far as these tunnels are concerned is there are no rooms other than offices. So in the event of, of an attack, um, what they have are uh, enough cots to sleep, I think, somewhere around 800 people in the actual tunnels. So the only person that has an actual room would be the general. And the general has a tiny room with like a fold-down Murphy bed. And it's, it's just incredibly unglamorous inside there. It is a cave. Here are some guys mounting the I-beams onto these huge springs. And here's another look at one of the springs. I don't have the exact specs on these things, but they are incredible to behold. Okay, this picture is the diesel generators for their backup power. They used to be their primary sources of power, but these are the backup generators. And now I believe Shine Mountain Air Force Station gets most of its day-to-day -day power from Colorado Springs Utilities. Here is the dome that they built to hold up the roof, essentially, of the of the central command area. And they they built it outside, and then they took it apart and took it inside and, and built it into the structure, again, just wedging it up into the rock. I didn't get to see the actual control center where they observe all of the different goings-on in our airspace, and they don't actually let people in there to see them without a, a fair amount of clearance, so I didn't get to see that. But here are some pictures that were in this folder of of the Space Defense Center. Again, I don't know. I didn't get to go in there, so I don't know if this is the... I always pictured it being a lot bigger. Maybe this is just what it looks like. But then here's this weird illustration that if you look closely, uh, it shows these sort of lower level down here of people doing things. But then there's this weird thing with the projections on this screen and people watching the projections. That looks very much more like what um, I pictured from War Games. And here's another look at things. The bank of super old computers. Again, more photos that were in this folder of pictures that they gave me. But the uh, I believe this is Princess Anne visiting. And here's JFK. This is not actually inside the Air Force Station. I think this is out at Pete Field or Shriver. Um, but here you can see the pictures that you were just looking at uh, right behind him. Here's Ben Stein. Here is uh, Jordan Knight, I think, from the New Kids on the Block with uh, PFC Mason, who was our tour guide. Here's me doing the robot, and that's it. But it, it's too bad in a lot of ways that the, the tours are closed to the general public. If you ever do get an invitation from somebody to go up there and check it out, it is really interesting to see the engineering, to see the way they built the reservoirs, to see how they cool the place, to see how they store all of the you know banks of food and the cots and everything. And it really is just a survivalist's dream. The amount of maintenance that goes on there too is just incredible. But it's a it's a it's a feat of human ingenuity and also an incredible testament to the amount of fear that our country was experiencing during the Cold War and the need to have something that was just that bomb proof and the amount of thought that had to go into every aspect of just having this really highly functional cave. So uh, check it out if you can, and see you next time.